والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فهذا الموضوع يعتبر من الموضوعات المهمة جدا ولا شك أن إساءة استخدام النعم أنها تكون نقما بسبب ذلك والله عز وجل يقول ولئن شكرتم لأزيدنكم ولئن كفرتم إن عذابي لشديد قد يعذب الإنسان بالنعمة وأعظم العذاب في النعم أن لا يعرف حقها وأن يستخدمها في غير طاعة الله سبحانه وتعالى وهذه اسمها التواصل الاجتماعي وللأسف استخدمها كثير من الناس إلا من رحم الله في التقاطع وأصبحت وسيلة إلى بث ونشر الكذب والشائعات وسوء الظن الذي أورث التباغض والتقاطع والتدابر إلا ما رحم ربي نعم Our noble Shaykh, Shaykh Abu Abdullah Abdul Rahman and Maysam will preserve him for us, started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the peace and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And furthermore, he said that this subject is some, something that is, it is a subject that is very important. And there's no doubt that the misuse of social media, it changes it from being misusing in general the bounties and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us. It may, they make They make them trials, causes for trials and tribulations. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the meaning of the verse, and if you are grateful and thankful, I will increase you. And if you deny, if you deny our uh, favors, uh, then my punishment is severe. So one could be punished and it, uh, because of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him. And from the greatest of that, or from the greatest reasons for one to make the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him a punishment is to not give it its due right and to use it in, in improperly and in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This specific bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is called social media and they are means for connecting uh, be between the people and to socialize. And unfortunately, some people they've changed them. They... Um, They've changed it to make it a reason for people to become uh, further apart and to make uh, to make them to make uh, the people uh, instead of socializing to take them apart and to cause enmity between them because of the use of it in spreading lies and rumors and uh, evil thought uh, against people and uh, this is it has become a. a it has become a cause for people to become divided and to become to have enmity between one another. Now, the talk is about the use of the social media on the prayer to Allah. And the use of it on the person and on the behavior. ذلك على البيت والأسرة باب آخر وهو باب عريض ولا شك أن كما أن فيه من المحاسد فيه من المفاسد والمساوئ وقد لخصت الكلام في هذه المحاضرة بإذن الله تعالى على بعض التنبيهات التي أراها والله أعلم أنها مهمة للغاية لمن دخل في هذا الباب وهو باب الدعوة إلى الله عز وجل سواء كان عالما أو كان طالب علم أو كان محبا للدين 
ونشره وأيضا إرساله لغيره إنه يجب عليه أن يتنبه لهذه الأمور التي أنبه عليها بإذن الله تعالى of social media uh, in regards to the da'wah, in regards to giving da'wah, uh, this is what the subject will be about and the discussion will be about. As far as the harms of misusing social media upon the individuals and uh, one's character and one's manners and also in regards to the families and the households, uh, this is another discussion and another subject. Uh, but And it is, of course, something that is wide and has a lot of discussions under it. Um, and just like it has, uh, it has benefits, it has clear benefits, there's, there are also clear dangerous harms. Uh, but this is the discussion today is in regards to uh, using social media while giving da'wah. While giving da'wah. Uh, and those are some advices that uh, I find... Wallahu a'lam and Allah knows best that to be very important in regards to the to one who indulges in this in this matter, meaning the matter of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether the person is a scholar or a student of knowledge or just someone who knows their religion and wants to uh, wants to spread their religion and wants to call people to the religion by sending uh, by sending it and passing it to others and sending and passing things to others. Uh, those are some points that people should be aware of. Now, التنبيه الأول أن تتحقق أن تتحقق من العلم الذي تريد أن تنشره بين الناس وتنظر إلى كلام أو إلى كلام الله عز وجل الذي قد نقلت تفسيره فتتحقق أن هذا التفسير هو التفسير الصحيح الذي جاء عن السلف رضي الله عنهم وكذلك الحديث النبوي تحقق بأن هذا الحديث حديث صحيح وأن معناه معنى صحيح لأن هناك علم الرواية وعلم الدراية فعلم الرواية متعلق بصحة سنده وعلم الدراية متعلق بصحة فهمه فلا بد من الجمع بين أن يكون صحيحا في أصله وأن يكون الفهم أيضا صحيح كم من أناس ينشرون أحاديث ويذكرون ويعلقون عليها بمعان خاطئة وضلالات وبدع وكل هذا لأنهم لم يرجعوا إلى فهم السلف الصالح وكلام أهل العلم لا بد أن تنقل كلام أهل العلم الموثوقين وهذا هو التنبيه الأول ولا بد أن تعلم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حذر من أن يكذب عليه ووعد بأن من كذب عليه متعمدا فليتبوأ مقعده من النار ولا يكفي أنك وجدت هذا الكلام في شبكة أو جاءك عبر الواتساب أو غير ذلك لا يكفي لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بئس مطية الرجل زعمه ويقول صلى الله عليه وسلم كفى بالمرء كفى بالمرء إثما أن يحدث بكل ما يسمع أن يحدث بكل ما يسمع ليس كل ما يسمع ينشر ليس كل ما يرسل لك ينشر وبعضهم يقول أنشر تؤجر وقد 
يكون أنصر تؤزر فلا بد أن تتحرى الحق ولا بد أن أن يكون نقلك نقلا صحيحا موثوقا عن العلماء الربانيين المعروفين بتمسكهم بالسنة وأخذهم بها نعم So the first uh, point of advice is in regards to uh, confir confirming and verifying the knowledge that you want to spread amongst the people. So you should look, for example, if it is from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Quran, that you should know that what you're spreading in regards to understanding it and its tafsir, its explanation, to know that this is the correct understanding and the correct explanation. Uh, from what, which came from the Salaf, from the righteous predecessors, or from the uh, from the people of knowledge, whose knowledge is who are known to be upon upon righteousness and upon knowledge. And also, when it comes to the hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that you should know that both it's authentic, that it is correct and it is sound, it's authentic from the uh, on behalf of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also that you should know and understand its meaning. Um, because um, there are two sciences when it comes to spreading the hadith. There is the science of the narration of the hadith and also the science of the understanding of the hadith. Uh, the science of the narration is known to uh, where you look at the chains of narrators and you find uh, the authenticity of the hadith. And as for the understanding that you should know that when you spread the hadith that it is upon, that when you spread the hadith that you understand it properly. Uh, and one must combine between th those two sciences when one is trying to spread the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This way you're spreading something that is authentic and correct and also something that has the correct understanding. Because how many people they spread the hadith and they comment on them. The hadith itself could be could be authentic, but then they comment on them with incorrect comments, and they uh, spread through those comments that they put on the hadith. They end up spreading falsehood and innovations. Why? Because they didn't go to the understanding of the salaf or the people of knowledge, those who are trustworthy from the people of knowledge. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned against lying on on his behalf, um, and. He promised a severe punishment for the one who lies upon him on, or on his behalf uh, intentionally. And that one should uh, expect his place and his position in the hellfire if he lies on behalf of the Messenger وسلم, intentionally. So it isn't sufficient that whatever you find on the, on the internet or whatever you receive uh, as in the in the form of messages on social media or WhatsApp or the likes that you should you should immediately start spreading them. Rather, you should uh, you should be careful and you should be aware because the Messenger وسلم, he mentioned that it is sufficient for the for one in the form of sin that it is a sufficient of sin upon in the, an individual to narrate everything he hears to spread and say everything he hears. So it isn't that anything that a person hears that he should go and speak about it and spread it. Uh, rather, some people, they, spread, they send messages and they say, spread this me message and you will be rewarded. There is a reward for spreading this me message. And in reality, it, there could be, it could be a sin. It could be spread this message and you would be sinning. And you would be doing an act of disobedience. So it is upon us to know the truth before spreading and to know where uh, whether what we are sending and what we're spreading is in accordance to the truth or not this way you you are sure and you know that what you're spreading and what you're sending is both authentic and is upon the correct understanding now i'm shaykhana at تعمل حسن الظن بالناس بالآخرين كما تحب أن يحسن الظن بك فلا تنقل شيئا عن الناس فيما هو متعلق بعوراتهم وكذلك فيما هو 
متعلق بمشاكلهم وما يحدث بينهم لا سيما بين طلاب العلم وبين أهل العلم مما هو داخل في قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعنيه وهو الداخل في قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن تتبع عورة أخيه تتبع الله عورته ومن تتبع الله عورته فضحه ولو كان في بيته فإنه ينبغي علينا أيضا في هذا التواصل الاجتماعي أن لا نكن نحن من ينشر الفتن التي قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ووعد بالسعادة لمن هرب منها إن السعيد لمن جنب الفتن فلا تكن أنت ممن تقرأ أيضا هذه المواقع أو هذه الرسائل التي تكون زرعت بين طلاب العلم أو بين المشايخ لأجل الفتن لا سيما أن هناك مغرضون حاقدون على الدعوة يريدون أن يفتكوا لطلاب العلم والعلماء ويريدون أن يوقعوا بعضهم ببعض ونحن لا نعرف عن كثير منهم إلا أسماء مستعارة إلا أسماء مستعارة وهذا خطر عظيم أنك لا تعرف الشخص فتقبل روايته وأقل أحواله أنه مجهول فكيف وأنت قد علمت منه ما ينبغي عليك أن تسيء الظن به ورواية المجهول لا تقبل لأنه قد يكون ثقة وقد يكون ضعيفا كذابا قد يكون متروكا فعلينا أن ننتبه لهذا الأمر ولذلك الخليفة الراشد عمر بن عبد العزيز رحمه الله تعالى لما سئل عن الفتنة التي وقعت بين الصحابة أجاب بجواب عظيم فقال تلك فتنة سلم الله منها سيوفنا فلنسلم ألسنتنا وكذلك نحن نقول فلنسلم أقلامنا من الفتن ورسائلنا من الفتن التي توغر الصدور على بعضنا البعض وكذلك تكون سببا لضعفنا وفشلنا ونحن ولله الحمد ندعو ندعو إلى التوحيد والسنة ونبذ البدعة وأهلها والتحزب وغير ذلك من الأمور التي ينبغي على كل داعية لله عز وجل أن يكون من أهلها نعم And the second point that we need to uh, point out is that we should have a good thought of others, of the people. Just like you want them to think good of you, you also have to give them the benefit of the doubt and you have to think good of them. And uh, do not spread uh, amongst the people things that cause enmity, and cause hatred, and cause problems, and cause trials and tribulations, especially between the people of knowledge, the students of knowledge, and the scholars. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he warned us against this by saying what means whomsoever um, from the perfection of one's Islam is to leave off things that, they, that do not concern them. And likewise, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us against trying to go out and find errors and mistakes of others. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said what means whomsoever looks for the faults of his brother, Allah will 
will uh, expose his faults or will look for his faults and whomsoever Allah looks for his faults he will expose him even if he was inside of his own house amongst his family also we should point out that we should not be spreading the rumors and the trials and the tribulations uh, the trials and the tribulations the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that the one uh, the uh, the one who is saved and the one who is happy and will, will be in pleasure is the one who escapes away from them. Not the one who goes and looks for them and tries to spread them. The Messenger وسلم, said what means the one who is pleased and happy is the one who is kept away from the trials and the tribulations. So do not be from those who read those messages which are sent uh, to only to cause problems between between the people and between uh, especially between uh, the students of knowledge and we should know that there are people whose intention is they they come between us and their intention is to cause problems and uh, they want to cause problems between the people of knowledge and the students of knowledge and we do not know many of them many of them we don't even know them they use fake names they use nick nicknames and fake names so this person that you do not know and who is using a fake name and a nickname how do you accept his narration and the things that he tries to spread how do you accept them the least of his situation is that he is someone who is unknown and those who are unknown their narrations are not accepted uh, why? Because he could be, yes, he could be someone who's telling the truth, but at the same time, he could be someone who's lying. He could be someone who's spreading false and uh, um, false claims and lies. So we should be aware of this. Al Khalifa, uh, Umar, ibn al -Aziz, uh, ibn, uh, Umar uh, bin Abdul Aziz, uh, may Allah have mercy on him. Uh, they, uh, when he was asked about the trials between the, uh, between the companions, may Allah be pleased with them. He, he said, this is a trial that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved our swords from them. And so it is upon us to save our tongues from those trials, keep our tongues safe from mentioning and speaking about them. And likewise, we say we should keep safeguard our tongues and our pens and our writings and our messages from spreading trials and tribulations and problems between the brothers that cause enmity and hatred between them and that cause us to become weak and to become divided when we all are trying to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we all are trying to spread tawheed singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and weren't against polytheism weren't against uh, innovations and misguidance so it is upon us to be to uh, to prevent ourselves from getting and indulging in any of these matters naam shaykhana كذلك الداعي إلى الله عز وجل لا يقنط الناس من رحمة الله كثير ممن يستخدم هذه التواصل الاجتماعي يرسل أيضا مقاطع فيها تقنيط للناس من رحمة الله ولذلك انظر إلى قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من قال هلك الناس فهو هلكهم فيرسل ما يعني يكون فيه انتشار أهل البدع مثلا أو غير ذلك فصاحب السنة أو العوام قد أو مثلا يرسل بعض المقاطع الذي يكون فيها إجرام أو غير ذلك بأنه وهو يريد أن يحذر من ذلك ولكنه يسيء الاستخدام فإذا به يكون سببا لإهلاك الناس وسببا لترويع الناس وسببا لنشر إساءة الظن فينبغي له أن يتنبه يتنبه أن لا يصيب الناس بالقنوط من رحمة الله نعم and another point is that one who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not cause the people to despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, some people unfortunately they spread things in the cause people to despair, to despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us against the likes of these things. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whomsoever says that the people are destroyed, uh, then he is the most destroyed of them. And some people unfortunately, they for example spread messages 
that show that the people of innovation are or the, the people of innovation are increasing in numbers and the people are following the innovations and the misguidance or uh, they send messages uh, showing crimes and things of the sort. Uh, yes, their intention is that they want to warn people against these things. But in reality, this is an incorrect use of social media and incorrect uh, having the correct intention is not sufficient because he causes the people to become afraid to become in fear and also to make the people think, uh, yani despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كذلك من التنبيهات أنك يجب عليك أن تتعامل مع الشائعات تعاملا سلفيا صحيحا لا سيما إذا كانت الشائعة أنها في أهل الخير في أهل الصلاح قد قال الله عز وجل لولا إذ سمعتموه ظن المؤمنون والمؤمنات بأنفسهم خيرا بأنفسهم أي بإخوانهم هذا الأصل الأصل بقاء ما كان على ما كان حتى يأتي دليل على انتقاله من أصله الشائعات الأصل أنك لا تصدقها ولا تنظر فيها بل الأصل أنك تبقي ما تعرف عنه الخير أنه بخير وأنه في عافية وهذا هو الذي علمنا الله عز وجل في حادثة الإف نعم And also from the points that we have to mention is that if you uh, if you receive and if you see something that spread rumors, spread news and rumors and gossip, that you should deal with them the proper way in accordance to the way of the Salaf. Especially when it comes, especially if those news and those rumors are in regards to the people who are known to be upon righteousness and upon good and upon, uh, upon good. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what means have you heard it the believing men and women thought good of themselves uh, thought good of themselves meaning of their brothers of the other believers so the principle is that things remain the way they are until there is a proof of, of being otherwise so if you receive things and you hear rumors in regards to people who are known to be un upon righteousness and upon good You should not believe them and rather you should consider that what you know about the person to still be true the truth and to be still be accurate and do not think uh, think of him otherwise and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in regards to the story of the false uh, the false accusations that were that were made in hadithat al-ifq naam shaykhana <laughs> أنبه أيضا تنبيها آخر وهو أن في تتبعك لأخبار إخوانك و أو أخبار من حدث منه زلة أو خطأ ونشر ذلك بين الناس ولعل بعض الناس يظن أن هذا طريق صحيح وفيه الإحسان إلى الدين أو غير ذلك هذا خطأ الصحيح أنك إذا سمعت عن أخيك شيئا أن تناصحه وأن تتصل به إن استطعت وأن تحرص على هدايته وأن لا تتبع عورته ولذلك انظر إلى قول معاوية رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنك إن اتبعت عورات المسلمين أفسدتهم إنك إن اتبعت عورات المسلمين أفسدتهم أو كدت أن تفسدهم لأن قد يكون هذا الشخص فعل منكرا سرا 
وأنت تخبر الناس به فإذا بك أفسدته أساءت إلى سمعته وإلى شخصه فتكون سببا لإفساده نعم and also from the points is that uh, another point is that you should not uh, look for the news and the information in regards to your brothers uh, especially if they've made a mistake or if they erred or they've dis uh, they've done a sin and to go and spread that unfortunately some people they think that this is the proper way and this is incorrect this is wrong if you hear something in regards to any person that he had sinned or disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he had made a mistake the correct way the correct and proper way is to advise him is to uh, if, if you can if you're able to to call him contact him and advise him and not go look for those faults and those errors that people do uh, Muawiyah radiallahu an he said that I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam say if you look for the faults of the Muslims and the heirs of the Muslims, you will destroy them. You will you will corrupt them and destroy them, or you will come close to destroying and corrupting them. Why? Because someone might, the the individual may have sinned, may have just done an act of disobedience, but he may have done it in secret, and didn't want it to come out. If you go and look for them, and find these things and spread them. Then he will, uh, it, it will cause him to to become corrupted, and it will uh, cause him to uh, to become destroyed. Now, I'm Shaykhana. Well, kalam huna an an ikhwa fi Allah Azza wa Jal, wa ikhwa fi Allah, wa amma ahl al bid'ah, fala hurma lahum. ليس الكلام هنا الكلام على الدعوة إلى الله عز وجل، و أما أهل البدع. And uh, here the discussion is about our brothers in, in Allah and the, the brothers that we, we know upon to be upon the Sunnah. As for the people of innovation, uh, they have no honor. No. ويعني قد يكون أيضا عنده بعض الأمور الخاطئة التي لا تجو شرعا فمثلا يصور المحادثات التي تكون بينه وبين الناس فينشرها أو يرسلها إلى غيره هذا لا يجوز لا يجوز فعله مع الخائن فضلا على المؤتمن والمؤتمن قد قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أد الأمانة لمن يأتمنك ولا تأخذ من خانه وكذلك أيضا أن بعض الناس قد يسمع آخرين يسمعهم بعض المحادثات التي تكون بينه وبين بعض الناس أو بعض الإخوة هذا لا يجوز وهم لا يرتضون ذلك أو مثلا يكون جالسا مع مجموعة من الناس ثم إذا به يفتح المكبر فيجعلهم يسمعون يعني كلامه وقد يكون هو لا يريد هذا الأمر ولكن لو أخبره أنا جالس ومعي فلان وفلان والآن يسمعونك هل تأذى بذلك لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعد بأن من تسمع حديث قوم وهم له كارهون صب في أذنيه الآنك يعني الرصاص يوم القيامة هذه أيضا من الأخطاء نجد الآن أن بعض الإخوة إذا حدث بينهم شيء مباشرة يقومون إلى تصوير المحادثات وإرسالها بينهم وهذا من الخيانة التي لا تجوز ولو فعل هو أنت لا يجوز لك أن تفعل وأن تستخدم كل سلاح في الرد على أخطاء غيره وإنما يجب عليك أن تتقيد في الأمر الجائز. نعم. And also, our Sheikh Abu Dhabi said we will summarize the remaining points because the time is uh, tight. Um, also, some people, uh, if they have errors or mistakes, 
um, that uh, they think that it is okay to go and record, for example, record the, what people are saying or what they're doing, um, and they go and spread these things, they record, record them or spread them, and this is not permissible. It is not permissible to betray the, the one who betrays. How about the one who does not? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, what well, means give the trust to the one who tr to, to one who trusts you and do not betray the one who betrays you. And so some people, for example, they, uh, they go and record in secret what some people are saying and then they send it to others or they play it amongst people or, for example, they call someone and they put, they put them on speaker without asking them. And then uh, the, the people end up listening to what they're saying and they do not approve of that. If they were to, to ask him, that is something else. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, do not, uh, uh, whomsoever listens to the speech of other people when they do not like it, they do not approve of it, then uh, lead will be, will be poured down his ears on the Day of Judgment. So some people, unfortunately, they, uh, they record and they spread these things, and this is without a doubt a form of betrayal. And even if he was to do it himself, so even if someone did the same, you are not supposed to go and, and uh, do, do that. If he recorded you in secret, for example, and spread it, you're not allowed to go and record him in secret and do the same. Um, and rather, you do not, uh, you do not reply with the, the falsehood or return the falsehood with falsehood. Now I'm Shaykh Hanab. أختم وإن كان الكلام فيه يطول ولكن أختم بأنه لا يجوز النشر لأهل البدع وأهل الانحراف في المواقع مواقع التواصل لا يجوز أن ننشر لهم ولو قالوا الحق ولو قالوا الحق فإن الحق الذي يقولوه هم ليسوا من أهله ولذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما قال الشيطان الحق قال صدقك وهو كذوب فهو ليس من أهله فلا ينبغي أن ننقل عنهم ولا ينبغي أن ننشر لهم ولا ينبغي أن, 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 أن نجعل الناس يطمئن إليهم بل ينبغي أن نحذر منهم وهذه من الأمور المهمة جدا وكذا نبع الدعوة الله أن ننشر المقاطع التي تكون في غناء ولو كان في 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 ما يقال بعض أو يعني هذا خطأ وهذا أهل البدع أحزاب هذا من فعلهم في نشر هذه الأمور ظاهرة فيهم لا سيما أهل الأحزاب إنهم الغاية تبرر الوسيلة عندهم فأنصح نفسي وإياكم جميعا أن نتقي الله عز وجل في هذه الوسائل وأن ننشر الحق بالطريقة الصحيحة وأن نتجنب الكلام وغير ذلك قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعل هذا هذا اليوم تكذب الاجتماعي فتصل الافاق تصل كل مكان قد راه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يشرشر شذق ومن خراه عيناه فقال هؤلاء الذين يكذبون الكذب وتبلغ نسر الله من اطاله أن نعرف قدرنا فبعض النبدا يطالب علم مجرد أنه يأخذ فوائد أو مثلا يأخذ من موقع وينشر للناس يظن أنه يطلب العلم هذا طلب العلم طلب العلم أن تقبتيك عند أن تأخذ الوصول الصحيح ليس فقط أن نكتب فوائد يأتي الإنسان بفوائد وهو من أهل العلم ولا من أصلا من طلبة العلم فلا تغتر ورحم الله ابن المبارك لما سأله يعني أحد الناس فقال أوصني قال اعرف قدرك فعلينا أن نعرف أقدارنا نسأل الله عز وجل أن يحفظني وإياكم وأن يعيدني وإياكم من جم من مضلات الفتن 
الله تعالى اعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك وانعم على عبد رسول محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين هذه بعض التنبيهات وهناك تنبيهات كثيره ولكن الوقت لا يسعفنا الله المستعان والمعذره نعم على الاطاله نعم. And I'll share with Allah, I said, I conclude with pointing out that it is not permissible to spread and to send things from the people of innovation uh, and the people to them in social media to say the truth in specific instances, to say the word of truth. That doesn't mean that it is permissible to go and spread their words. Rather, they are not considered to be from the people of the truth, even if they say the truth in certain, uh, at certain times. The Messenger وسلم, said about the shaytan, he said to you the truth and he is a liar. So he affirmed that he is a liar. And it, it, uh, we should not, and it is not permissible to spread what they say and to pass it on and uh, make the people find comfort and find it okay to listen to the people of innovation and the people of falsehood. And this is something that is important to talk in detail about, but it is something important. Also, uh, we are spreading things, uh, uh, recording things that have music, even if they are in the background, as they say background music, this is, this is incorrect. And this is not from the actions of the people of Sunnah, rather this is from the actions of the people of innovation and the people of Hizbiya, partisanships, that they send those uh, recordings. If they could be from the speech of the people of knowledge, but then with background music or with music in the background, this is not permissible. And in them, and or according to them, they consider that the, uh, the goal uh, justifies the, the means and that is not, this is not proper. So we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only spread the truth from the people of the truth according to the in, the, in the proper way. And we should stay away from all the lies and all the falsehood. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that the, the man who makes the lie and it goes and it reaches uh, yani, uh, the east and the west. Uh, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw this, the, the state of this man that he was, uh, his uh, his mouth and his uh, nose was being ripped uh, all the way to the rear. So, uh, also another thing that I wanted to point out, our Shaykh Abdullah said, that it is upon us to know our level, to know who we are, to know our proper level. Some people, if they spread and if they send a couple of messages, they think they became students of knowledge. If they go and collect some benefits from websites or from messages, and they go and spread them and pass them on, they think that they became people of knowledge or students of knowledge. And this is not the right way. Seeking knowledge is by sitting and bending the knees uh, by the people of knowledge and taking the knowledge from its people. Knowledge is not about collecting few benefits that one sends. This is not seeking knowledge. So we should not become arrogant and think that we have reached such a, such a high level because, we're, we, because we can send a few messages. Uh, Ibn al, Ibn al Mubarak, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. Uh, a man asked him, and he said to him, Advise me, give me an advice. And he, he rahimahullah, he said to him, Know your level. So, though our Shaykh Abdullah, he said, uh, Those are some of, the, some of the points that we wanted to mention. And of course, there are many more advices, but the time uh, doesn't, we don't have enough time to, to cover them all. Uh, and our Shaykh Abdullah uh, concluded by supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him to make us from those who are, uh, who, who, yani, uh, those who listen to the words and follow the best of them. وَأَقُولُ جَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا شَيْخَنَا وَبَارَكَ فِيكُمْ وَنَفَعَ بِكُمْ وَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَلْهَمَكُمُ الصَّوَابِ جزاكم الله خير جميعا. عندنا عندنا مغرب. نعم. وجزاك شيخنا يعني شيخنا أنا عارف يعني الوقت يعني ضيق ولكن أريد أن أسألك شيء واحد هل هل لدينا الوقت أو انتهى؟ هل لدينا يعني وقت أو الوقت؟ يعني؟ الآن الآن بقي أربع دقائق لإقامة الصلاة. دقائق دق... خلاص خلاص يعني في في لقاء قادم إن شاء الله. لنا لنا إن شاء الله وقت آخر. طيب إن شاء الله وتفكر على هذا السؤال ما نصيحتكم يعني في المستقبل ليس الآن ما نصيحتكم يعني التي تبلغنا إلى التعاون أنا أعني يعني التعاون 
خصوصا بين طلبة العلم وكذلك هنا في شونلار كما تعرفون يعني حصلنا يعني إلى مشاكل في كل مكان في بلاد الغربية ولكن كما أطلب منك في المستقبل إن شاء الله لا بأس وأنا أيضا أنصح نفسي وإخواني جميعا أن نصدق مع الله عز وجل الصادق الصادق يصل والله عز وجل يقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين ينبغي أن نصدق مع الله عز وجل في دعوتنا وعلمنا وجميع أمورنا فإذا صدقنا فإن الله عز وجل يوفقنا وإن لم نفعل ذلك فإن الإنسان يخذل واعلم أن ما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك وما أخطاك لم يكن يصيبك واعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن يضرك بشيء لا يضرك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله عليك هذا الذي ينبغي اصدق مع الله وسر يا طالب العلم ويا من تريد أن تعلم الناس ولا تلتفت إلى ماذا يقال عنك إن كنت صادقا بإذن الله تعالى الله عز وجل هو الموفق وهو المطلع على السرائر ويعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور بارك الله فيك شيخنا آمين وياكم بارك الله أصل الله تبارك وتعالى أن يجعل هذه كلمة المفيدة على موازين حسناتكم يوم اللقاء آمين وياكم جزاك الله خير وأنت جزاك الله خير على حب على إخوان حياك الله شيخنا أما أعطيك رحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته مهند you want to translate? Naam. So our Sheikh Habibullah, in brief, he mentioned that, uh, that his advice is to, to be truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have the correct intention and be truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what means, uh, O you who believe, fear Allah and be from the be from the truthful. So if the person was truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he's calling for, for Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him success even if he was even if people spoke ill of him and people made accusations against him uh, that he is still if, if his call is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he should not worry and he should not uh, he should not listen to those rumors and what people say <laughs> Uh, these are advices that need to be to be saved in gold and diamonds and pearls, alhamdulillah. Sahih. Sahih. And there was this tremendous benefit that the Sheikh mentioned in the end, that the people now, they think that taking messages from one mawqa, one website, and this, yani, naql, yani, all of these messages, this has become knowledge today. Sadaq. This has become knowledge today between the people, and that is a really sad affair, a really sad affair. I know people, some, uh, subhanAllah, there are people that I know personally uh, who are imams in communities and they're not there for the salawats. They're not there for the salawat. But if it is that you happen to look on WhatsApp, you will see them for the day at least changing their status on WhatsApp 25, 30, 40, 50 times for the day. And this is a really sad affair. So that is a, definitely a tremendous uh, point that the Sheikh mentioned from the many points that we should all concentrate upon. Alhamdulillah, we thank our brother again Abu Husam Muhannad for his time and his effort to translate uh, these tremendous advices of our Sheikh. And we ask Allah wa ta'ala to bless the both of them. Uh, and we thank Allah firstly before you know, subhanAllah, all of the praises of Allah that has made this possible for us to come together in. Uh, with this opportunity to benefit from this uh, very uh, tremendous affair, this affair of knowledge, and to listen from the people of wisdom, the people of insights. Uh, I ask Allah wa ta'ala to continue to give us these opportunities to sit and to benefit. And again, I want to thank my brother Hussam, uh, Abu Hussam Muhannad for partaking. Uh, it has been a pleasure uh, getting to know uh, the brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, continue to make his efforts correct and ours, I mean, and may Allah give us many more opportunities. Jazakallah khairan. Muhannad, don't end yet. Which is Zakumallah khaira. Wallahi, it is an honor for me, Akhi, to be with you, uh, my noble brother, Abdul Haq, and also all of my brothers in Trinidad and all the brothers and sisters listening in. Uh, I, I am humbled and it is really my honor. Uh, to be amongst amongst you and to partake in this in this conference, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make all of your efforts and your records of of good Amen. deeds and to accept. I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to accept from all of us 
and to make all of our actions and statements and speech sincere for his sake. I mean, I mean, and as 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 the Sheikh was speaking, I remembered in the beginning he requested from me to make mention of the masjid. No. He he requested that I make mention of the masjid, and I forgot. <laughs> so and I'm Subhanallah, sure. the people of insight, they have wisdoms in their requests, and it's only because of my any yani, my shortcomings that I forgot. So, to the brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah. We're broadcasting uh, this event, this conference for Masjid al Tawheed here in Trinidad. And I should have, should have said this in the beginning. Uh, Barakallahu feekum. This was a request from the Shaykh. And as I mentioned to the brother uh, Abu Sam, there is wisdoms in why the people of insight request certain things from us. May Allah wa ta'ala continue to bless them and give us more opportunities with them. My noble believing brothers and sisters, this brings us to the end of this particular. A lecture with our Sheikh Abdul Rahman Al Umaysan, and we don't want to take up too much more time of the brother Abu Hussam Muhannad. May Allah Taala bless all of you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for all of your support. We have one more lecture for tonight, and that is with our noble brother Abu Saleh Ilyas Aderus Hafidahullah Taala, which will be at 9 p.m. with the topic entitled "He is Salafi, but." He is Salafi, but this is an important maldu and important topic. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless all of you. May He protect you. May He illuminate your path with success and tawfiq. And may Allah Azza wa Jal give us all a good ending. Wa ilahuna barakallahu fikum wa subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.